flower friends it's nicole from flower hill farm and i'm just doing a little bit of fixing up i know i haven't shown you guys down here in the flower field a lot this year but i have a photographer coming who's going to be taking some pictures for some community members and then tomorrow i have to harvest all of this and that's for my last csa the final one and i thought i'd finally bring you guys on a harvest short video so my zinnias are doing amazing these rows the deer have eaten everything the deer walk through here every single night they've eaten all the amaranth all of a lot of the celosia they're even eating my sweet annie uh, i have basically remnants of plants that once were these are all amaranth that are growing back but they keep coming and nibbling on all of the plants every single day so these middle rows there's a lot of celosia right there so that's doing well zinnias are great these three rows are the Actually, there's more than three. There's four rows that the deer have eaten. And then over here, I do have some stuff that's looking quite well. The mahogany splendor hibiscus, um, and then there's scabiosa. And then obviously my gumfrina row is uh, a replica of last year. And it does look quite nice. So the photographer is gonna have some stuff to work with. Down here, we've got my gladiolas. Those are gonna need to be harvested in the morning. And then I've got the sweet William patch, straw flowers, ageratum, Lysianthus, and then the snapdragon row is um, kind of all done. But I've been sitting down here and watching the hummingbirds. They just keep coming. I hope I can catch one on camera. I might have to go get my actual camera so I can zoom in on them because I'm just on my phone right now. But these are just, they've been absolutely gorgeous here. I am actually having my pictures taken tonight too, which is terrifying and exciting. I feel like I'm having a fat face day, so I don't even want to do it, but I'm going to do it. And yes, I do have milkweed. Oh, so yeah, the fields, I mean, they're beautiful, but uh, dealing with a lot of deer pressure this year, pressure that wasn't here last year. So I'm going to go upstairs, upstairs, up the hill, get changed, maybe put a little makeup on. I'm going MIA without makeup today. I want to have a few pictures with what I normally wear every day, right? My shorts, my t-shirts, my clippers, and my Dickies belt, of course. And then I'd like to get some lifestyle photos with a nice pretty dress. So we'll do that. I'm gonna go up there and get ready. And um, then tomorrow, which will be the next part of the video that you see, we're gonna harvest. here by the zinnias brand is gonna grab grab two buckets one for me one for you um, you'll take one row I'll take the other and we can just hit it all the way down so this is the zinnia patch that I planted a couple weeks later than last year but also uh, we had really cold nights in June we even had some cold nights in July it's just now starting to pump out blooms and there are what three days left in the month three days left in the month so it was a late start to the zinnias but we're gonna go ahead and harvest I'm gonna say three buckets maybe off of this today which but just grab two and we'll go from there I forgot as long as I can on some of these that's perfect and if anything um, I'm just deadheading anything that looks go. gross just to get rid of it and um, encourage it to pump out more blooms it felt really good deadheading the uh oh, the straw flowers <laughs> yeah oh they needed it they were yeah. just that rain all of a sudden, everything got a little bit of mildew. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm So this, I believe, this is the purple, the deep purple. There, because I have, these are the lilacs. <laughs> the deep purple, I'm gonna eat so many flies today. I can feel it, they're hovering all over the place. And then this, I think, is the wine-colored ones. Because I did all the purples in one section. But the, oh, isn't that? stunning mm -hmm. that's amazing gave myself goosebumps, goosebumps. <laughs> so there's a couple that look really good but they don't pass the wiggle test and i've done the wiggle test a million times um but they don't pass no good you're cute oh there's an inchworm i'm gonna move him to the green i'm sorry oh this one fell over but it still looks fantastic. <laughs> the will is strong with this one. 
I think I may have grossly underestimated when I said three buckets. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm getting so many nice cups. Yeah, this is awesome. This is the zinnia harvest that I should have had a month ago. So good. Wow, I cannot wait to make these bouquets. There's something about the queens there. I think, I don't even know which one this is. If it's queen lime peach or queen lime lime or queen lime blotch or queen lime red or queen lime orange. I know it's not red or orange, but I don't know if it's blotch. I think it might be. This is a no-no. But I'm doing it. You're breaking your own rule. Yeah. Now is this full size? Like kind Yes. Of Oh my. <laughs> this is like a susical, it's basically a plumbing system. I am not throwing that out. Come with me. Yes, these are dumb. These are perfect. Oh wow. You can cut them shorter because that's, I like them just a couple inches above the top of the bucket because otherwise sometimes they'll get, they need support. Sometimes they'll kink if the, you know what I mean? Actually this green one's not bad. A lot of times the center and the green ones turn brown. Ooh, I want to turn around and cut those queens too. But I'm, they're going to wait their turn, wait their turn. Wow. This yellow one is insane. Here I am harvesting orange zins, and look at this one. Look at the size. Look at it. Wow. Wow. It's perfect. Some really nice orange ones down here. Go into the truck. Every year I say I'm going to stop growing white zinnias. And then every year I get the most perfect white zinnia. And I change my mind. They just brown rather quickly in the middle, as do the green ones. But these ones uh, are beautiful. This is what I mean about browning in the middle. Don't mind the sleeping bee. Thank you, White Zinnia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <gasps> the monarchs are going nuts today. So good. Ooh, we're coming upon my other favorite Zinnia, the dark red. It's a keeper. Just me randomly talking to a camera? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, first I thought maybe you're on a call with your sister. Well, you're sturdy. You're like an ox. As are you. I think this might be carmine. Hmm. Let's let us look down, shall we? It's too bright out today, but these are fantastical. Grab some of these. Feels weird that I'm not reaching over to get the ones on the other side. You're doing that. So helpful. Wow. Look at the size of that one. It's huge. Okay, so we're done with the zinnias. Brandis is getting some sunscreen on and then she's gonna go over and start cutting the gumfrina. We have so much gumfrina. The rows look gorgeous. We ended up with four buckets of zinnias. I'll pull one out. Ugh. Oh, wow. They're amazing. 
I cannot wait to make the CSA bouquets this week. They're gonna be crazy, and Brianna's gonna make herself a bouquet to take home today. <laughs> We're gonna get the gomf. I think I'm gonna start on some Solosia. It's finally like the Zinnia. It has been delayed by the colder weather and the lack of rain, to be honest. It's been two kind of situations. So I'm gonna get the Solosia, and I'm gonna get it just a little bit, just to see how it does. There's some orange and there's some burgundy. And I grew a several different varieties. Some I grew from seed that I purchased from, you know, like Johnny's or a wholesaler. And then the other stuff I was able to get from the Arnosky farm in Texas. And the seeds that I started from the Arnosky farm, they saved their own seeds. They're at least a foot taller than the other stuff. So I'm excited to see the difference. It's definitely a more robust plant. They've been working on their Solosia varieties for years. They're amazing growers. And I was able to visit their farm last year and I actually won some of their seed. Let's go over to the Solosia. It's a weedy mess. I am not gonna worry about that. You guys wanted to see a harvest video. This is real life. This is my farm. It's a mess. Check it out. How about this random gorgeous snapdragon right there? I know, I saw it earlier. I'm cutting it. Before I cut the Solosia, this is the Gomfrina that Brenda is starting on. She's starting with the strawberry fields. We have strawberry fields, we have orange, we have, I think that's a lavender color. We have carmine, we have, wait, this is carmine. That's a dark purple. We have the bicolor rose, more orange. We have the pinkity pink. We have white, we have more pink. This is actually the apricot, not apricot. What is it? I can never remember the one that I got from Johnny's, the new one. Silver something, who knows? The scabiosa looks awesome too. I wanna cut heavy on everything today. I just wanna cut heavy on everything. This is gonna be a day long harvest. Okay, so you go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go over and grab some of this Solosia. The plumes on the Solosia are not really large yet, but I did a vase life test the other day and even with just a little bit of a plume and that beautiful dark foliage, the Solosia pops in bouquets. So I'm gonna grab some. Here is the Solosia from the Arnoskis. It is a lot taller than what's behind it over there. That's the stuff that I grew from everybody else's seed. So this stuff is definitely more robust. We have not had great weather. I know some friends of mine have amazing Solosia, but they grew theirs in the hoop house. So maybe next year I should consider maybe growing some in the hoop house, which I have another hoop house that we have to put up. <laughs> it's uh, gonna be a busy year. So this is how I'm cutting it. It does have the plumes on top, um, but they're not huge plumes like you would see, but it also has this beautiful dark foliage, which screams fall to me. So I'm gonna use them. I've got a bunch right here and this rogue snapdragon that I just found. Most of my snaps are, are done for the season, but this, it's a pleasant sight today. So I am gonna go ahead and cut some of these ones with the bigger plumes on top and then leave the rest to see if they do get bigger. Uh, but I'm afraid they're not gonna get bigger. They're just gonna go to seed. So I might as well just cut it all, right? I'm gonna cut the bigger ones. There's some nice orange ones down here too but it does go to seed, so I don't want that. Ooh, this is the mimosa. The mimosa is a beautiful champagne, obviously, color. It's, it's a lighter one, so I'll show you guys some of that as well. There's really only one that's pluming up right now, though, so be patient, people, be patient. Oh, I killed it. So the best part, not the best part, but one of the great things about Solosia, it, it is a cut and come again flower, meaning you cut it and it sends out side shoots and those side shoots typically are usable. <gasps> I have some Crespedia. I didn't think I was gonna get any. I only have two with, that are colored up and they're short, but hey, <laughs> it's better than zero. All right, I'm just gonna do a half bucket of this kind and then there's that orange plume stuff down there. Um, that's looking decent. Not bad and definitely screams fall. Obviously the plumes, I want them bigger, but you know, you can't have everything. All right, so this is the Crespedia. It's just starting. There's one down here. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be great. I don't know. They're supposed to be little, it looks like the tarnished plant bugs got to them. They're a little brown on top. Probably not gonna mess with it. 
So these are the side shoots on the Celosia because the deer ate these. Come on now, the deer ate the Celosia. The deer ate the amaranth. They did. They ate everything. They. This is, you can see. It's just. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. The deer ate everything this year. So these are actually shorties. I'm not going to use these, unfortunately. They're the perfect color for end of August, early September. Uh, but you know what else is perfect? That status is screaming my name right now. I got to get over there. Got to get over there. Oh, I have some of the purple down here I can grab. Yep. Yep. Really pretty. I have one of the brain celosias, but um, which is coxcomb, obvious reasons. Uh, but it's short and it's past its prime and it's full of bugs, so not happening. Over here, I have status and finally it's looking good. All of my warm season annuals are just wicked delayed this year and there's, it's just the combination of the drought and the cooler nighttime temperatures. They just didn't have a chance to thrive, but the status are finally showing color. Down here, I have basically apricot, shades of pink, yellow, white, and then I'm supposed to have blue, but guess who's not showing up to the party this year? The blue status still is not here. I have one purple one in the area where the blue is supposed to be, and I have all of this blue, but it looks like the plants are rotting from the bottom up. I don't think I'm gonna have any blue status this year. And then there's yellow, and there's what's called white slash silver. Looks the same to me. And then over here, Scabiosa party. It's all the pin cushions, and they are so gorgeous right now. We're gonna have a bucket just of Scabiosa to cut. Ooh, that's looking nice. So some of my status turned brown yeah, the other day. Really yeah, without rain. flowering. I'm thinking it was the rain, but some of it is looking pretty good. I think the white is looking the best, actually. Wow, and I would think for some reason the white is would be the worst. To but the it. yellow, this is like the apricot yellow mix. It's completely brown. Gosh. Um, which actually someone last year asked me if I had ever experienced that, and I was just like, no, I haven't. Mine are perfect. But now I have, and I don't know why. Yeah, this purple is, this looks good. So with harvesting the status, I try to let it get mostly open. It's not for you, that's for the camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get some apricot. That is uh, my favorite. See, there's like some on the same plant that are brown and others that are perfect. Frustrating. Here's a nice patch of white and there's this one dark purple that I love. I love the dark purple. I know it's pretty standard, but when I grow it, I never get this dark purple. I love it. I'm running out of hand <laughs> room. This makes me so happy. Oh, I'm so happy. This is the yarrow that I planted with you guys over the winter time. It's really not that tall, so I'm, I haven't been really cutting off of it. I guess there are some usable stems. I believe this is the summer berries mix. Absolutely gorgeous. I have about 50 feet of it here, um, but it is a perennial, so I'm probably gonna leave this patch in because I know every year it just gets better and better. It is a short-lived perennial, so it's not like it lasts forever, but it usually does, oh. What is happening here? I have interrupted a private moment between two monarch butterflies. Um, I thought at first they were dead, but no. Some privacy, please. <laughs> there are lots and lots of colorful yarrow plants, but it's, um, I did not mow the row in between this and the bupleurum. <laughs> so let's widen that out. <laughs> so the yarrow 
row looks great, but then there's um, explosion grass, and then the bupleurum, and then the edgeratum, and then the straw flowers, and then the lysianthus. So I'm gonna go harvest some lysianthus right now, but I wanted to show you guys the yarrow. It did really well, and it'll be even better next year. This color though, this is, it's actually a little bit more apricotty than it's picking up on camera. Wow. I hate when my camera does not show the true colors because these guys, these things are just, sorry, they're amazing. All right, maybe I'm gonna cut some. There's my straw flower patch. There she is. It was rather robust in my last video but it's the end of the season for these guys they've been throwing out blooms for the past oh i don't know i've been harvesting them for maybe six weeks or so they are at the end of days so we deadheaded them the other day so there really aren't as many um, bits of color because we got a heavy rain and they ended up with some mildew some dark spots underneath the petals so yeah we're moving on lysianthus is very weedy but it's very pretty Yep, this is gorgeous. I'm cutting so many. I gotta go get a bucket, I don't have a bucket. But I do have weeds throughout here and I'm not gonna make any excuses for my weeds. They're just there and I don't have time to do everything about them. So I actually bought the wrong um, stuff for, um, let's just say this is not Bio360. I bought the wrong biodegradable fabric and I have paid the price for it this year. It's one of my top five mistakes for the season. So I am going to cut these Lysianthus stems and I'm not gonna talk about the mistake that I made that was one of the worst of the season because um, I don't want to um, relive it. Look at those. These are ones that I started from seed. So this patch that I just showed you in the front is the stuff that I started from seed. And then further on down the line were the plugs that I bought in from Farmer Bailey. And um, there is some definite frosted explosion grass in there. I didn't plant that. That's just a wild weed that grows very excessively here. Um, so on the other side of the frosted explosion grass, that's where my Lysianthus lies. Such amazing height on these Lizzie's. Let me go down here. <laughs> this is, I mean, a foot taller than anything I've ever grown when it comes to Lysianthus. And they're just so much bigger than they ever have been in years past for me. I guess this was just a good year for my Lysianthus. You know, you have bad years of some other things and then you have good years of some crops and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. This is a gorgeous green. I'll show you guys, I'll get a close up. Um, I should get buckets first though, because I don't have any buckets. The champagne is just starting to bloom. That's what these ones are, that first long stem that I just showed you. They're the champagne. And then it turns into this green right here. It's not um, Roseanne green, but it is a green and it's fantastic. So are the Roseanne brown, they're the next one down. These are the champagne ones and then this is a green. I have to look up the exact variety. It was from Farmer Bailey, like I said, but the stem length on these are incredible. Ooh, here's a white. The first of the white is ready. That's awesome. I am loving the pure white. They're beautiful. There's another one ready. Some of these are throwing up multiple stems, which is awesome. Some are not. These are amazing. So I'm gonna let that one open up a little bit more. What I mean is like more buds on the stem. That one has like six buds. I don't want to have it. I don't want to cut it when there's only one open. But then others only have, wow, that's one stem. That is one stem. That is amazing. That's what I like to wait for so that there's more open on the stem so it has more of an impact in the book. And then you have the stems that are so low. <laughs> so low you can't hear me that are only themselves. And we love them too. I remember going to Farmer Bailey's last year and seeing his Lysianthus and thinking to myself, he grew it in a hoop house. And it was so lush and so big, just like this. And I was thinking to myself, how it must be because he's growing in a hoop house. And I just didn't get the ranunculus out of the hoop house early enough this year to put all the Lizzie's in there. And clearly I don't have to. They have thrived in this location, in these conditions. I'm really happy with them. We are coming up on the mother load 
of Roseanne Brown. And I cannot wait. Wow. Look and look, this is my hand. This is how big these blooms are. I have done nothing, nothing. I did not do Miracle Grow, any of that crap. This is the Dublini pink. They have a much smaller um, head and they have like a multiple on one. Very cute, very cute. They're also shorter. See this weedy section? The most beautiful thing in the world is in here. And these grass, this grass grows and takes over before you know it. So it didn't look like this two weeks ago. And then, you know, I'm at the nursery, I've got mums, I'm selling stuff, I'm making bouquets, I come down here, and the grass has taken over. I was really good about keeping it weeded at the beginning of the season. Um, but like I said, I put the wrong product down. I was uh, erroneous in my purchase. And uh, I will say that Bio360 is an amazing product. This is not Bio360 in here. This product that I use is flimsy and any piece of grass that starts to grow up through pokes right through the biodegradable film. I absolutely don't understand the point of this product right now. So, I miss my Bio360 and I will not be erroneous in my purchase next year. That is the queen, Roseanne Brown. We just took a quick break, drink and snack, the best. So Branda's gonna start with the Sweet William. These are the Amazon series. She's gonna go ahead and fill up a bucket for me for the CSA. She also, I was doing some paperwork. My son starts soccer practice tonight. I just had to upload his physical to the school forms. So while I was doing that, she cut most of the gladiolas that you guys saw blooming in here. There are a few left. I'm gonna snag the few that are left. And then I have to finish up the Lysianthus. And then I'm gonna grab the Sweet Annie and I still have to harvest basil. Yeah, those are fun. I like those. In here, did you see my tomato? Yes. Yeah, there's a tomato. And you know what I think I'm gonna do next year, bouncing around from subjects is, this red gladiola just had me thinking, I love red, it, especially with the snow on the mountain and the, the orange and yellow zinnias. I love the red, white, and yellow, red, white, and orange combos. I think I might just do a batch of gladiolas that are just red instead of having to hope that they come. Yeah, yeah. That way I can have them more consistently. Yep. Purple ones coming, some white ones, some coral. The corals are just beautiful too. Can't go wrong with a glad, in my opinion. Ooh, here's a dark purple. There's a green and purple mix in there that's beautiful. Yeah. I can't wait to, I'll go get some shots of the ones that we already caught. There are tomatoes everywhere <laughs> because they reseeded themselves from last year. This was my, one of my tomato rows last year. I don't see any actual tomatoes yet though. I see a lot of flowers. No tomatoes. So this is the stage I like to harvest gladiolas, just when you can tell what color they're gonna be. They stay in the cooler amazingly well. I could keep these in the cooler for probably seven to 10 days and then pull them out and they'll start to open slowly in the cooler and they're totally usable. So I'm probably gonna put these in the cooler and use the ones that are more open for tomorrow's bouquets. So here is the bucket <laughs> which she had already harvested. Um, yeah, I might be able to squeeze them in um, attempting. Probably should just go get another bucket so I don't do a lot of damage. I think I'm gonna do one at a time here. Okay, two buckets of glads. The stem length on this, eight inches, nice. 16 inches. I mean, that's 24 inches easy. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. And I didn't even cut all the way down. Unnecessary. Um, between the zinnias, the lisianthus, the gladiolas, the status, the gomphrina, the scabiosa. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna need more than one or two stems in each one. 
honestly, and it would be overkill. I mean, these are going to be the biggest bouquets I've ever made CSA. Spoiler. Yeah, it's a spoiler. It's a finale, though. So it, it this, is. It's the finale to the season. I want them to be uh, impressive, and I want them to leave a good taste in my customer's mouth, if you will, um, or, you know, maybe in their nose. <laughs> <laughs> a decent aroma, exactly, because I want them to say, you know what, I do want to do this again next season. I want to repeat this. This was an awesome experience. Let's do it again. Buy one for my friend. Exactly. It's a great gift. It is a great gift. This, obviously, this is a little bit fast, mm -hmm. so you can, but here's the thing. If it's past, they're really cool. Those like look too. cool, yeah. yeah. I honestly like, I like these. I just think they look, I do too. they add they're interest. Awesome. You want me to give you a couple? Yeah, a couple. They get okay. wimpy um, yep. if they're not a little bit more ripe. I'm here on the other side of the Snapdragon row. The Snapdragons are past their prime. We're not cutting off of those anymore, and they've basically gone to seed the ones that I didn't cut. This is where the Sweet Annie patch is, and ironically enough, I didn't plant this here. This is where I had my Sweet Annie patch last year. It self-seeded itself, and it has grown beautifully, and this is the exact stage that I want to use Sweet Annie for my bouquets. So I'm cutting it, stripping the bottom, as I do most other things. I find that the woodier stems stay better. Uh, if they still have a lot of frilly fern-like stuff on top, they tend to wilt. But these are so strongly scented, I love them. However, they can be very, very strong, um, too strong for some people. And in, in fact, if I have a bucket in the car with me, it could be an issue. It's so beautifully scented that it can be very overwhelming to the senses. So I am going to be cutting a whole bunch of this uh, because I don't know how much longer I have in my season. I'm going to assume that my season has two more weeks left. I'm gonna assume that because two years ago, we had a frost on September 15th and killed everything. Last year, we didn't get a frost until early October, but you never know. And we've already had some nights in the 40s. In fact, it was 44 degrees here the other morning. So I don't know how much longer I have. Definitely gonna be keeping an eye on the forecast, letting me know when the low temperatures are coming because that's when I'll wanna harvest as much basil as possible or as many zinnias as possible. Just because once that cold weather hits, my season's over with. Once I get a frost, everything is done. Most things, not everything, but most things cannot handle a frost. But I do have some things growing inside my hoop house. I have a whole bunch of dahlias, which my dahlia crop is non-existent this year. So if I haven't been showing you the dahlias, that's why. I have no dahlias. The plants are kind of stunted at about 12 to 18 inches tall, and I don't have any blooms. But I do have some dahlias inside the hoop house, and those are starting to bud up. So we'll see if we get anything from that. I also have some zinnias inside the hoop house and some other filler flowers and the rest of my lilies. So hopefully I will have a little bit of a season extension once the cold weather comes. It's basically the length that I like for them. And I just strip off the bottom eight inches or so that are gonna be in the water. Um, and then, but look, see how they're balled up? Mm -hmm. That's how they kind of have to be, otherwise they get wilty. Okay. Um, we my scabiosa bucket over? I'm pretty sure like everything is balled up. So you, we can cut basically all of this. Not all of it, but just a bucket, you know? It's intoxicating, isn't it? But some people have an allergic reaction to yeah. it. This is so, a plant that I would wonder if I do, so I yeah. watch myself. Yeah, so please do, because it, that would be awful if I had to do it all. <laughs> uh, it does actually, when I, I was just saying to the viewers that when I'm in the car with a bucket of it mm -hmm. and it's next to me, I get a little sick to my stomach. <laughs> like a li like the rose lilies or something, when I'm working with those a lot at the time, it does make me sick to my stomach because it's so sweetly scented. But it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, grab this. I think we need a candle above this. I think there should be a candle. A Sweet Annie candle. I'd buy it. So this is actually a small version of Sweet Annie. It does get, like, like this is Sweet Annie right here. This is how it was for me a couple of years ago. And the best part about this one is you've got the central stem and then all of these side shoots are usable. I 
that's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Thank you, nature. This is the best part about you harvesting is the surprises that I get when I look in the bucket. This is our harvest. That took, oh, just to put it in reference. So, so this is two people harvesting, right? That, it's 1243. We started at about 830, 840, I would say 845. So that was four hours of two people harvesting. So that's eight hours of harvest time. So that's eight hours of harvest time. That's crazy. And I mean, we're pretty proficient. You know, we go rather quickly. So uh, that's, uh, that's how long it takes to harvest this many flowers. It does not happen quickly. So just an idea, eight hours to harvest this many flowers. And there are still a lot more out there. We could have probably harvested another truckload, mm -hmm. but we didn't, we don't need to, but we'll harvest again in two days for the next round. I have the farmer's market and then I have my CSA, my second CSA that I have two a week. I have that one on Saturday, which we'll cut for on Friday. So, all right guys, that's it. You'll see me making bouquets with this in another video coming up. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. <gasps> look at this yarrow. Come look at this yarrow. I saw that one. Yeah. That's wow. One. I mean, do I want it? Yes. I don't know. That's, that's really good looking. Incredibly good looking. Yep, that's when, when the clouds come. That's the best lighting for my florals. I love you. Baby, baby, baby. Need a bucket, baby. Do, 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 Mama's gonna sing you a lullaby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take you higher. Boom, 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 boom.